Okay, guys, sorry about that. Uh, looks like our class map was not, um, I'm sorry, our policy map here in Router 2. Uh, as you can see, it's still not uh, showing the discard eligibility bits being set. Uh, however, though, what I found out here is it is actually, Router 1 is actually setting the frame relay discard eligibility bit. And it's, you know, packets marked it showing 115. Let's go ahead and do another ping. I'll just do a ping of 100 just to show you this. So we should see packets marked with the frame relay discard el eligibility bit here on router 1. We should now see this as 215. And as you can see here, we do see that. Um, a way you can check this on the receiving end of this, which in this case is router 2, to see if the frame relay discard eligibility bit is actually being set is if you go ahead and do the uh, show frame relay PVC command. This will give you all the PVCs. In this case, we're looking for the Dell C201. And as you can see down here, we're seeing inbound the discard eligibility packets as 215. So if I go ahead and on router 1 here and ping again, ping 100 here, what we should see here on router 2 is the discard eligibility packets should be incrementing to uh, 315. So as you can see here, we were successful in setting the frame relay discard eligibility bit here on router 1. Again, what we need to remember is that by default, if we just do a class map and then the name, it's going to be set as a match all. In this case, we had two things that had the match. It had the match the ACL length, in which case we um, are matching all ICMP traffic from the source of loopback1, which is the 11 network. And then it also had to match the packet length uh, between 1000 and 1200. And if that was both of those were met, then under the policy map we were um, setting the frame relay really discard eligibility bit here. As you can see on router 1, we can see that we were getting packets being marked. And then a way to check it here on router 2 is if you're messing with the frame relay discard eligibility bit, you just want to do a show frame relay PVC command. And then you can see here the discard eligible packets incrementing then you know you have a successful implementation here. So, so I think we have a, a, a pretty successful and you guys should have a pretty good idea on how the uh, you know the MQC works by now. Uh, I would suggest just getting in and just by practicing just do several labs over and over just try to give yourself different scenarios make up some labs and just see how the traffic works and, and how these, you know, the class maps and the policy maps all work together here. Um, so, again, this has been kind of a longer lab, but it's very vital that you understand how the MQC works because it's used so often in so many different types of QoS implementations that it's very important that you grasp and you know every single detail with the MQC here. So I just want to thank you again for watching the video. And again I just you know wanted to tell you guys that you have you know three different types to the MQC. You have the class maps where you're classifying the traffic. You have the policy map in which your you're matching the different classes that you classified the traffic within and then you're setting an actual action to the traffic that you're matching and then you have the third the third point here which is to actually apply the service policy or the, I'm sorry the policy map to an interface either inbound or outbound with the service policy command so I again want to thank you for watching this video and I hope you'll be with me with the next one. Thanks.